good morning everyone we are going to start with the new topic that is under autocoids that is angiotensin bradykinin and the substance p okay so these are the contents of presentation so we are going to divide this particular uh, lecture into three parts that is the first one that is angiotensin second one that is bradykinin and the third part which is very small part neuropeptides and in that specifically we will be talking about the substance p okay so about uh, the angiotensin and bradykinin you have heard before angiotensin you have heard like millions of times in the in respect to that of the angiotensin uh, renin angiotensin aldosterone system okay about bradykinin you have heard it uh, in the same chapter that is inflammation and tissue repair okay so it was one of the factor that was modulating the vascular permeability okay so let's see the first one that is angiotensin so angiotensins these are the peptide hormones and they are derived from the protein precursor that is angiotensinogen okay so this angiotensinogen is a serum globulin and it is also called as a renin substrate and it can convert uh, this particular uh, or this angiotensin we can get from the angiotensinogen by a sequential actions of proteolytic enzymes in the circulation and in several tissues okay so angiotensinogen it is synthesized by liver and it is converted by circulating renin which is obtained from the kidney into angiotensin 1 which is a deca peptide deca means 10 okay so by itself this letter is inactive this angiotensin 1 is inactive this angiotensin 1 it is converted by angiotensin converting enzyme that is ACE which is located in plasma and in the capillary endothelial cells which are present mainly in lungs into the octapeptide that is angiotensin 2 octa means 8 okay so this angiotensin 2 is further converted to either angiotensin 3 or angiotensin 4 okay so angiotensin converting enzyme it is also found in various tissue which include the brain kidney and in the adrenal glands okay so local renin angiotensin system in the tissues it exists independently of the renal hepatic base system so it is not that only uh, this renin angiotensin aldosterone system is associated with the renin which is being released from the kidney uh, and the uh, angiotensinogen from the liver it is not so there is local renin angiotensin system is also present and it works independently of the regular renin angiotensin system which we have seen uh, like uh, millions of time earlier on Okay, so ACE is a non-specific and it also acts on other natural substrate such as bradykinin which it inactivates. So the two systems, the renin angiotensin system and the bradykinin system, they are uh, related to each other in this particular aspect that this ACE enzyme it uh, causes formation of one active substance and it causes inactivation of other active substance that is bradykinin okay so angiotensin 2 is the most potent angiotensin it can also be synthesized by a pathway that does not require ACE so alternative 
ways are also there by which we can get the angiotensin 2 so it is not necessary that by inhibiting the ACE enzyme we will get the angiotensin 2 by some other ways also we can get the angiotensin 2 it acts through the G protein coupled receptor that is called as 81 and the 82 receptors so angiotensin 3 it acts on the same 81 and 82 receptors so let's see the receptors the first one that is 81 receptor uh, what this receptor is responsible for what biological effect it produces that it mediates the vasoconstrictor action then it stimulates aldosterone production then it promotes cell growth and hypertrophy of the arterial and the ventricular wall muscle in the deceased and in failing heart okay so uh, in one way this 81 uh, receptors are responsible for the remodeling of the heart and this remodeling of the heart we have seen plays a very important role in pathogenesis of the congestive cardiac failure okay so next second receptor that is 82 receptor it ameliorates the adverse effects of the 81 receptor activation by inhibiting cell growth and the hypertrophy so whatever effects 81 receptor uh, produces that uh, effects they are nullified by the effects produced by the 82 receptors okay so 82 receptor mediated actions they are actually beneficial ones okay so 82 receptors they are abound in several tissues in fetal life and may be involved in fetal tissue development and in cell differentiation okay so the 82 receptors they are less abundant in adults and they are present in brain adrenal medulla vascular endothelium and in the reproductive tissues okay so pharmacological actions of the uh, angiotensin so it acts at several sites in the body it increases peripheral resistance as we have seen the angiotensin 2 it is a potent vasoconstrictor substance that's why it increases peripheral resistance then it prevents renal sodium excretion which is like uh, aldosterone mediated action or uh, by itself it can cause this uh, renal sodium excretion prevention and also it modulates cardiovascular morphological structure so uh, cardiac remodeling it can be taken by or it can be caused by the angiotensin 2 so it is 40 to 50 times more vasoconstriction constrictor than that of the noradrenaline on molar basis okay so when we come when we take the same molar concentrations of the noradrenaline and this angiotensin the angiotensin is the more potent vasoconstrictor substance okay so it causes rapid regulation of the arterial blood pressure in response to acute fall in the blood pressure by constricting the arterioles and to a smaller extent it constrict the venule so major action is on the arterioles and thus it is responsible for the regulation of the arterial blood pressure so long term maintenance of the blood pressure which is a slow response it is mediated by regulation of sodium excretion by the kidney so uh, short term regulation of blood pressure is by vasoconstriction and long term regulation or maintenance of blood pressure is by uh, the regulation of sodium excretion by the kidney okay so angiotensin 2 uh, it directly promotes renal sodium reabsorption in the proximal tubules and it also causes sodium retention through the release of the aldosterone okay so it stimulates the vasopressin that is adh and acth release and it increases the thirst okay so once 
uh, once the thirst is there because of this uh, vasopressin and ACTH release, uh, the person uh, drinks the water and thus uh, if there is a hypovolemic uh, condition if it is present then it is being rectified because of this action okay so it also causes hypertrophy of the heart and also thickening of the blood vessels so this action it is important pathophysiological so angiotensin 2 it contributes to the pathogenesis of the hypertension then cardiac hypertrophy then heart failure and the diabetic renal disease okay so pathophysiological role of the angiotensin 2 is very important and that's why many of the drugs that we have seen earlier on they prevent the action of the angiotensin 2 either by uh, acting as an antagonist at its receptor or it prevents its formation that is the ACE blockers and the AT2 receptor blockers okay so the direct action of the angiotensin on some tissue it stimulates the formation of counter regulatory substances which include vasodilating prostaglandins and the nitric oxide okay so on the other hand the target organs may release substances such as catecholamines endothelin and growth factors which may amplify the effects of the angiotensin so understand the prostaglandins and the nitric oxide they produce the effect exactly opposite to that of the angiotensin and the catecholamines endothelin and the growth factor they promote or they uh, produce synergistic actions as that of the angiotensin so the balance between the vasoconstrictor substances and the vasodilator substances it determines the response of the blood vessel to the angiotensin 2 so if vasodilator substances they have like a dominant role or dominant action then angiotensin 2 won't have much effect on the blood vessel but if vasoconstrictor substances they have dominant role dominant action then angiotensin 2 will have the adverse effects or adverse reactions onto the blood vessels okay so next substance is the bradykinia so uh, before we actually see uh, what is bradykinia let's uh, see about the kinins in general okay so what are kinins these are the vasoactive polypeptides vasoactive means they have uh, action onto the blood vessels and polypeptides as they consist of the um, uh, multitudes of the peptide bonds in their structure they are proteinous in nature and they are released from the alpha 2 globulin fraction of the plasma which is termed as the kininogens by the action of enzymes which are termed as the calicrins okay so the enzyme is calicrin and the precursor is kininogen and this kininogen in presence of calicrin gives rise to kinins okay so kininogens they are present in two forms the first form is low molecular weight kininogen that is lmwk and second kininogen is high molecular weight kininogen that is hmwk okay so as the high molecular weight kininogen has high molecular weight that's why it is limited to the blood stream so it cannot cross the uh, cell membrane barrier and get into the cytosol and that's why it remains into the blood stream only whereas the low molecular weight kininogen it can reach the tissues okay so calicrins uh, calicreas uh, which is a greek name for the pancreas they are highly specific proteases and they exist in two forms the first form is the plasma calicrins and the second is tissue calicrins so plasma calicrins they are present in plasma and tissue calicrins they are present in the tissue 
so depending on location they are named so okay so both normally exist in inactive forms which is called as the precalicrins okay so plasma precalicrin we will see first it is bound to its substrate that is hmwk please remember hmwk it is only present in the blood stream it is not there in the tissue that's why the plasma precalicrin it is bound to its substrate that is high molecular weight kininogen and the protease inhibitors present in plasma it prevents its proteolysis okay so when this system it binds to a receptor complex onto the endothelial cell membrane it gets activated to the calicrin so earlier on this precalicrins they are bound to the hmwk and uh, there are certain types of protease inhibitor, uh, inhibitors they keep this in this fashion only that is they don't allow precalicrin to be converted into calicrin okay so proteolysis means what when proteolysis will happen the precalicrin will get converted to the calicrin but this is inhibited by the protease inhibitor but whenever receptors to this complex that is precalicrin and hmwk complex uh, are expressed onto the endothelial cells and when this complex it binds to that particular receptor the proteolysis occurs and the precalicrin becomes calicrin okay so this generator calicrin it activates clotting factor that is the factor number 12 and it also cleaves the HMWK to a nona peptide that is nona is a 9 9 that is bradycanine okay so tissue precalicrin it is present in epithelial or secretory cells of the salivary glands pancreas prostate distal nephron and the human neutrophils okay so the activation sequence of this tissue form is not well delineated but the active tissue calicrin it acts locally near the site of its origin okay so unlike that of the plasma uh, precalicrin whose activation we exactly know how it gets activated but it is not known that how tissue precalicrin it gets activated but it is known that when it gets activated it produces its effect locally at the site of its origin only okay so it converts hmwk and the lmwk to a deca peptide that is calidin okay so deca is 10 okay so this calidin is also called as lysyl bradykine so only one extra amino acid is there that is lysine that's why uh, only structural difference if we see between bradykinin and the calidin is the one presence of extra amino acid that is lysine in the calidin that's why it is called as lysyl bradykinin okay so this is the uh, flow chart you can see uh, the plasma uh, precalicrin uh, gets converted into plasma calicrin and it converts a high molecular weight uh, kininogen in plasma to the bradykinin and when in tissue it converts it into calidin so low molecular weight uh, kininogen in presence of tissue calicrin gets converted into calidin okay so physiological roles of the kinins the kinins they are the potent vasodilators and they may also modulate migration of leukocytes and the tissue cells that take part in the inflammatory process okay so they are also most potent activators of the prostaglandin release which includes pgi2 that is prostacyclin from the vessels okay so receptors for bradykinin the bradykinin it acts on two receptor that is b1 receptor and b2 receptor 
so v1 receptor they are absent from the normal tissue and they are induced by the inflammation that means in presence of inflammation only v1 receptors they are expressed otherwise you won't find v1 receptors in any of the normal tissues so in absence of inflammation most of the actions of the kinin they are mediated through the b2 receptor which is a constitutive constitutive means it is always present okay so pharmacological action first on to the vessels and the heart the kinins they have about 10 times vasodilator activity when we compare it with that of the histamine so they produce mainly arteriolar dilatation in the skeletal muscle then in heart kidneys intestine and the liver via the local release of the nitric oxide and the prostacyclin okay so kinins they have also direct positive chronotropic and inotropic actions onto the myocardium and in moderate doses they release adrenaline from the adrenal medulla okay so next action onto the smooth muscle the kinins they stimulate smooth muscles including those of uterus then bronchi and the gi tract the term bradykinin it was coined initially to signify the slow contraction of the gi smooth muscle by a nonapeptide so bradi as we have seen in case of bradycardia the bradi means slow okay tachy is fast okay so they promote epithelial ion transport and fluid secretion in the airways and in the gi tract and thus leading to the cough and angioedema in the former and diarrhea in the latter case so when they increase a uh, fluid secretion in the airways they lead to the cough or angioedema and when they cause the uh, when they uh, cause fluid secretion in the gi tract they lead to the diarrhea and that's why in the ace inhibitors that we have seen the ace inhibitors and we have also enlisted the adverse effects if you remember when ace inhibitors are given they lead to the adverse reaction that is angioedema or the cough and these actions are because of the bradykinin and as we have seen the ace it is responsible for the degradation of bradykinin so if we inhibit the ace enzyme then bradykinin degradation it will be inhibited thus it will increase the bradykinin levels in the body and thus it will cause the adverse effects which we have just mentioned okay so try to correlate the things okay so next uh, pharmacological action that is genesis of pain so the kinins they evoke pain that is algesia and itching on application to the base of a blister via the b2 receptors nsaids they antagonize this pain producing property of the bradykinin so next action on to the vascular permeability they are more potent than histamine in increasing vascular permeability and inducing edema okay so when bradykinin acts on to the cells of the endothelium it causes contractions of the cells of the endothelium so the gaps between the adjacent endothelial cell it increases and the fluid which is present in the blood vessel it exudes out and thus it uh, leads to the edematous condition okay so next pharmacological action that is release of the prostaglandins and the paf paf stands for the platelet activating factor okay so the kinins they cause release of the biologically active lipids such as platelet activating factor that is paf and the prostaglandins from a variety of cells 
some of the actions of the kinase they may be indirect via the release of such mediators of inflammation okay so next substance last one is the substance p so neuropeptides so general consider a substance substance p is a neuropeptide that's why we will be studying about neuropeptides and then we will come to the substance p okay so neuropeptides they constitute a large and diverse family of small to medium sized peptides so many are found in the central nervous system the autonomic nervous system the peripheral sensory neurons as well as in many peripheral tissues so they are often released as co-transmitters along with non peptide neurotransmitters okay so when released from the peripheral endings of the nociceptive sensory neurons these neuropeptides in some species they cause neurogenic inflammation okay so nociceptive uh, sensory neurons means the sensory neurons which are responsible for carrying the pain impulse from the periphery to the central nervous system so the main peptides under neuropeptides they involve substance p the neurokinin a and the cgrp okay so substance p and the neurokinin they are small about uh, 1100 daltons uh, weight they have and they are the members of the tachykinin family so here the word comes uh, prefix comes that is tachy tachy is fast okay and with partly homologous structures which act on mast cell and thus releasing histamine and other mediators and producing smooth muscle contraction neural activation mucus secretion and vasodilatation so if we if you see all of these actions which we have just mentioned they are the actions of the histamine and the release of the histamine it is being caused by these particular substances okay so the tachykinins released from the central endings of the nociceptive neurons they also modulate transmission in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord and thus it affects the sensitivity to the pain okay so pathologic implications of the substance p and the other neuropeptides the neurogenic inflammation which we have seen earlier on it is implicated in pathogenesis of several inflammatory conditions which include delayed phase of the asthma then allergic rhinitis then inflammatory bowel disease and some types of the arthritis as well as in migraine they are implicated okay so that's why uh, if you see this all substances almost all of these substances neuropeptides they are uh, involved in the pain pathway okay so whenever you will study about the how the pain is carried from the periphery to the center that time you will get to know about uh, the exact role of this particular substance whatever we have just seen it is like only we have just touched the surface of the actions of the neuropeptides but instead they have very uh, greater role to play in the uh, generation of the pain impulse as well as it it's uh, carries to the uh, central nervous system okay so that's all for this particular topic and here with i will conclude my lecture thank you